So in order to get good retopology for these pins, what I decided to do was extract one of these out. I'm going to take to the top view. And ideally, these should be oriented at 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is rotate this back to a cardinal direction. And I might be a little bit under. I think I'm at 44 degrees. But if you're a little bit off, that's fine. Uh, yeah, a little bit off, and I'm the translation of it isn't quite symmetrical, but I'm not I'm not too worried about that. We're just going to try to match topology here. But it's easier to recreate something primitive or otherwise when it's oriented to a cardinal direction. So you can go into these and make adjustments to them. Uh, I'm just going to do one axis so that, you know, because then I can work orthographically. So I'm going to go into the top view, go to Create, Polygon Primitives, and Pipe. Hold X and then let go. And it may have, there we go, drag the height out. And then anything is fine for these measurements right now. I'm going to go into my front view, looking right down the z-axis, and I'm just going to set some general numbers that are in the ballpark, and then we'll start to dial it in a little bit better as we get it placed around here. Move it just so it's almost like a cage. I'm going to rotate it forward. I'm going to stick with something like about 122 minus 122 in the z and then I'm going to hold W and left click and go to object and then let go of those because that changes the transformation gizmo to be oriented about the object and not oriented to world space because then we can scale it or change the height. I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Might be a little bit off. It's a little bit forward, but I'm not too concerned about particular numbers. We're just trying to ma match topology. So for the pipe itself and the inputs, I'm going to make the subdivisions along the axis to 12. Take the thickness down to something, maybe 0.1 or 0.08. Just try to get it a little bit closer. And just by eyeballing it like that, you can get good retopology. Um, that'll be close enough uh, for something along these lines to get even you know more precise to particular um, topology you can actually take your high poly mesh and you can make it live we can set this back to a world transform we can delete the history on this now go into the vertices and we don't just want to move the vertices wherever we want to because now they're all going to hug to here and we don't want to go into object mode and move this because if we move it once, it's basically just moving it away. But if I ever try to move this again, it's only going to stay to the outside of the object. See, making it live just kind of forces that pivot to the outside. So the pivot's not really the basis of how I want to change this. It's the vertices. And this is something that you can do with with retopology but it also works to just sort of get things to match up so you can just kind of tap one of the uh, you know axes so that everything starts to hug to it then go to W and instead of moving things along a global or local kind of axis you move everything along its collective normal And that puts it as, you know, as precise as you probably can get something that's been, you know, retopologized. We don't have to worry about anything going on in here. So again, it's just, it's sort of just tapping the vertices moving in either world or local space and then switching to a normal move so that everything is hugged to that live object and then it's moving out along its own component normal. Once we have it, you know, I save out a version of this, we can turn off our, our live snapping. I got a layer for that base pin. I'm going to bring back the entire 
high uh, grenade. Let's go to a top view. Go to world, D and X. And we're going to bring it right to there. Make sure we freeze those transformations. And then we can rotate this back and hopefully minus 44 should give us just what we need. And it looks pretty good. So to create the rest of this form here, you can go ahead and model it off of this form. Go into multi-cut, hold control, and start to you know, add information in here that's going to help us generate the rest of this. I'm going to take this off by detaching the components, selecting these faces and deleting them. What I would do in this narrow space because it's so um, it's so tight in there now, because your low poly topology is going to set a little bit above it. I'm going to delete what I just created. The, the faces I just created, and then I'm going to extrude these out. Globally, just scale them out. Let's do about there. G is in golf. Bring them out a little bit more. Change the offset. Hold control and it'll refine that. If you want to see this shaded, that's what it's looking like shaded right now. G is in golf to extrude again. It's probably going to need to be another global move and then a scale outward. G is in golf, and then push these right back to here. This is going to be something that we want to create a little bit of a slope to it so that the uh, normals can project and be read accurately. So I'll put this on a layer, and then I'll turn off my high poly, go under vertices, and then just go ahead and weld those do the, with the target weld tool. Probably went a bit too far with that, but we can take, we can actually control right click, edge ring utilities, go to the edge ring, bring it in a little bit more. And then this can be the basis for the B object that we are going to then Boolean into the bottom of our uh, Nuka grenade.